I am an outlier, but I shouldn't be. I'm an engineer, a nanoscientist, an entrepreneur, and a mom. As a woman engineer, I'm outnumbered by men five to one. As a woman CEO of a tech startup, I'm outnumbered 20 to one. At Google, Twitter, and Facebook, women comprise a mere 10 to 20 percent of technical positions like coding. This isn't a great sign if these are the jobs and skill sets of the future. And while the interest in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math has increased in the US, it's alarming to note that the STEM career gap for women has widened over the past 20 years. The pipeline from engineer to CEO for women is remarkably narrow, and it's not getting any better. Constantly being the outlier in my field prompted me to ask, why are there so few women in technology and entrepreneurship? And what can I do to start to close the gap of inequality? To find the answer, I needed to go back in time, back to middle school, elementary school, even kindergarten. STEM is losing girls at every stage. In elementary school, about 74% of girls are interested in science and math, and they excel. But many times, when a girl performs poorly in math, she steered away from it. Maybe her parents or her teachers or her counselors told her that math wasn't for her. By their teens, many girls lack the confidence to push forward in math and science. They aren't encouraged. They lack mentors. Chances are they've never met a woman CEO or a woman in technology. Their body language is hesitant, and when they raise their hands, it's timid so they don't get called on. By now, there are fewer of them, and they feel like they don't belong. By the time we get to high school and college, we're left with only 14% of girls interested in STEM careers. All around, I see young women with a nurtured apprehension to standing up and starting up. Girls who've been taught to drop out instead of having the confidence to pursue their interests. If we're to close the gap of inequality, it must begin with what and how we teach our daughters. I believe we can make a change, but it begins by inspiring girls to stand up and start up. And this is what I set out to do when I founded Venture Lab, a company that teaches both boys and girls to become innovators and entrepreneurs. After years of teaching at the university level, and now teaching K through 12, I found three keys to building our pipeline of women engineers and innovators. So first and foremost, we need to teach our girls to break free from stereotypes. Girls are set on a pathway when they're given Barbies or when they see mostly boy heroes and science whizzes on cartoons. Studies of the brain show that specific neural pathways are created at early ages and affect the way that children perceive the world. So early stereotypes matter, and we as parents have the opportunity to filter these. As a kid, I remember growing up, and I remember my parents encouraging my sisters and me to play in the mud, to study fossils, to do messy science experiments that would stain the tablecloth of our kitchen table. And my dad would teach us everything from electrical wiring to changing the brake pads in cars. Growing up, I never realized that girls didn't do certain things, so I was never afraid to raise my hand in class or join the robotics club in junior high. My parents didn't realize it, but by exposing me to these so-called boy activities, they gave me the confidence to feel comfortable being the only girl in typically male-dominated fields. And you can do this too. Instead of just Barbies and princesses, let's expose our girls to science experiments and toys that encourage them to problem-solve and create. It can start with something small. Give a girl a screwdriver and take something apart to see how it works. Give a girl a science kit. Here's a picture of my sisters and me with a science kit that I got in middle school. <laughs> Play with Legos and Arduino, little bits or Minecraft. Teach a girl a simple 3D modeling tool like Tinkercad, or teach a girl to code using Scratch. These last two programs are real and free. And the second key is to teach our girls to redefine and embrace failure. Studies show that many girls self-select out of things that are difficult or risky because they're afraid that they might fail and they might not be perfect. I remember crying in a bathroom stall in junior high because I failed my first geometry test. I remember telling my dad that it was too hard. Calculating the angles of a polygon was just, it was too hard. And 
Instead of telling me that math wasn't for me, my dad got me a tutor, and he told me I could be anything I wanted to be, but I had to work hard for it. And that message stuck. So years later, my parents got to see me become an engineer. So let's encourage our girls to get out of their comfort zone and do things that they think is difficult or out of their reach. And if a girl does poorly on a test or her idea fails, let's teach her to think of failure, of failure as a process. It yields information. It means learning what doesn't work. Believing that you have the potential to overcome obstacles and being persistent in achieving your goals. When my university students walked into class nervous and excited on the first day, I always told them that I expected them to fail. But it didn't mean they wouldn't pass the class. So let's teach our girls that they can have failures without defining themselves as a failure. And here's the big discovery. After years of teaching at the university level and trying and failing to get girls into tech and entrepreneurship, I found that the secret sauce is to teach young girls to think like entrepreneurs. If we want more women innovators and CEOs, we need to teach girls to observe opportunities and anticipate needs. We need to teach them to innovate and create and take calculated risks. And no girl is too young. I once had a five-year-old student, and I asked her if she had any problems around her. And she's five years old, so she said, well, I always get in trouble for eating my Play-Doh. <laughs> so she's five, these are her problems. So we brainstormed for a little bit, and we came up with the idea of edible Play-Doh. So the thought process was, if you make your Play-Doh out of food, then you won't get in trouble for eating it. So she and the other students in her class brainstormed, and they went out and did market research. They surveyed the other students, and they asked, what's your favorite flavor? What's your favorite color? They came up with chocolate chip and pink strawberry. So we helped the girls make the Play-Doh. They came up with the name Tasty Dough. And then we helped them create a website, and they put pictures of their products and pricing online. At the end of class, they pitched to an audience, and each of the girls left with $20. <laughs> and these are five-year-olds who would otherwise just be at home watching cartoons about boy heroes and science whizzes. What I see is that, for girls, entrepreneurship brings science and technology to life. It becomes relevant and real. At a recent Venture Lab camp, we had a 13-year-old student who was passionate about ending obesity. So she came up with an idea for an app that would give kids more points in her game as they did more walking. So she went through the entrepreneurial process, and a year later, she launched a beta version of her app, and she raised over 200,000 in funding. And this is a 13-year-old. <laughs> and teaching entrepreneurship to girls can change their lives. I recently taught a group of troubled teens girls who aspired to work at the back of restaurants and clean houses. When they came into class, they were physically hunched over, and they would actually hide their faces with a piece of paper if they had to talk. We asked the girls about problems around them, and they talked about making it to school on time, having money for lunch, and even taking care of their own children. So we worked really hard to create an environment that was encouraging and free from judgment and fear of failure. The girls blossomed and they became leaders in their class. They were no longer afraid to stand up and speak up. And a year later, one of the girls became a keynote speaker at a gala. She received a full scholarship to college, and she wants to start her own company. And this was a girl who before just wanted to work at the back of a restaurant. Entrepreneurship instills in girls a sense of confidence that they can tackle large problems and turn their ideas into reality. They can 3D print an engine, create software, or start a company. As an engineer, a CEO, and a mom to two boys and two girls, I don't want to be an outlier anymore, and I don't want my daughters to be either. So today I ask you to help me inspire girls to stand up and start up. Let's create more women innovators and CEOs by encouraging girls to stand up to stereotypes and to start pursuing their interests without a fear of failure. If we did this, just imagine what our country would look like with, say, three times as many girls in science, technology, and startups. So let's create the next generation of women innovators and entrepreneurs who will have the confidence to follow their passions and meet the grand challenges of the 21st century. Thank you. <laughs>